here we are. Uh, nice to meet you, Dub. Nice to meet you too, man. Uh, tell us something about you, what you did in the past, you know. Well, I got into tattooing when I was only 13 years old, actually. Started doing some hand poke tattooing, you know, tattoos on, uh, you know, friends of mine. We were skateboard, little punk rockers. And you know what, tattooing was just kind of like that art form that like attracted me, you know, and I, I like the, the rebellious side of it. I like the permanent side of it. And it really kind of like spoke to me. So at 13, I started tattooing a lot of my friends. Um, around 16 years old, I had somebody make me kind of like a homemade machine, you know, out of a cassette motor and guitar string and, you know, kind of like the, the homemade setup. I worked with that actually. I got pretty decent with, with working with the homemade machine enough to start charging a little bit of money, you know, to my friends and, you know, people that wanted small tattoos. At that point, I saved up my money and I bought my first professional uh, tattoo equipment when I was 17 years old. Uh, this is back in Ohio, uh, back in the United States. And then I just kept practicing with that. So by the time I, I turned 18 and I graduated high school, I pretty much went, you know, into a professional studio right at 18. And I just, I've never looked back, man. You know, it's been, it's been a life changer. It's brought so many good things to me, so many friends and so many travels and things like that. So I tattooed professionally, you know, uh, starting at 18. As I got older and wanted to open up my own studio, I opened up my own shop in 1994 in Columbus, Ohio. And that was actually the, the sixth tattoo shop ever in that city back then. And that's how small tattooing kind of was back then. You know, it was a very, very tight, it's still a tight knit community. But back then it was, you know, even even smaller. So um, I went on, you know, I, I, I opened up a second studio at that time too called Second Skin. My first shop was called Stained Skin uh, back in 1994. Since then I've gone on to, you know, be an integral part of tattooing, especially in the United States. And now with more like tattoo products and things like that. Um, in my time, I've gone on to invent true tubes, yeah, uh, the steel tip disposable tubes, which a lot of people use. And then I went on to develop true uh, true grips as well, which were the the tattoo industry's first memory foam grip okay. covers to slide over, you know, the tubes and stuff like that. Now back in 2002, I developed uh, and started the Hell City Tattoo Festival way back then. You know, I think it's going on 22 years now, right around there, and uh, that's been phenomenal, man. It's been a life life changer for me. But the reception from all the artists, you know, with Hell City. Because when we when we started doing it, it was very different from a lot of other shows that were going on. We focused on a lot of the art, the artists treating them with, you know with the respect and like the attention that they needed, that they may have not been getting from other you know uh, shows and things like that. So, Hell City just continued to grow over the years. We expanded Hell City from Columbus, Ohio, all the way over to Phoenix, Arizona okay. as well. So we do we both. do two Hell Cities a year. Okay. Yeah, they're both phenomenal they both have their own flavor and things like that too. So with Hell City, you know, uh, after that I went and I actually sold both of my shops that I started back in 1994, mainly to focus on my own tattooing without the distractions, to focus on the, the product inventions and things like that. I've currently invented 11 products in tattooing. So yeah, I it. <laughs> yeah, a lot of, lot of different products. So that allowed me when I, I, I felt like when I sold my busy street shops, and I was trying to do the convention and the products, something kind of had to give, you know, to focus on another. And I, I felt at that time that the Hell City Tattoo Fest, that it was contributing to the tattoo industry, the tattoo community. So I sold my shops to focus intently on Hell City, developed the products and just kind of went from there. So Hell City now is kind of like, it's a highly reputable show that I, I believe has influenced a lot of the tattoo conventions going on right now. Uh, because we see a lot of promoters over in America come and you'll see them just kind of checking out how we do things, you know, and I, I'll walk them through it too to kind of show them how we do it. Because I feel like at the end of the day, it's to better all the conventions, to better the industry, to represent all of us in the right way. So since then, man, I've just been, been nonstop. I still tattoo. So I've been tattooing 37 years total, 33 professionally. And I, I wouldn't change a thing, man. And how is your life uh, when you stopping focus 100% on tattooing uh -huh. and focus more on, you know, not business, you know, but what you think that can help more the tattoo industry? Because LCT is an event that helps other to say 
oh, it's possible, so I can do it. Yeah. No? Yeah. And how, how your, main cha your mind changed after focusing more on the uh, More on the conventions? Yeah. You know, it, it goes from what I always say is like tattooing is like you and your client, you know, so you're affecting an individual at, at a time. And I felt that when I went to do the conventions in Hell City, I was affecting thousands at a time and the industry in general. So that feeling to me at that at that time was like, I always say like tattooing's given me so much over the years that that's a chance for me to give back to tattooing to, and to represent it in like a positive light, you know, to, to show tat, uh, tattooing beyond television, to allow people to come and experience tattooing and, and to realize it's not the stigmatic art form that a lot of people may have the perception of they they may think it's you know criminals and bikers and this and that you know but it shows that there's more younger professionals you know and and, and true art really to me tattooing's the most it's the hardest art form out there it's the most unforgiving art form as well you know so the permanence of it to me is so special and that affects a lot but me going on to do the conventions i feel like it it affects the whole community and, and more than just me and my client. Yeah, this is something that I think uh, the tattoo industries need more people that focus on, you know, the tattoo culture. Yeah, giving and back. And not money, you know. Yeah. Yeah, take they take some a lot and give back some. Yeah, exactly, and that's what I like to do. And that's like I, I talk about some of the product inventions and things like that. So when I started True Tubes, me being an older tattooer. I saw the kids going disposable and I was like, I want to go disposable because I don't like to scrub tubes all the time. But me, I didn't like the, the, the plastic tips because they made a lot of vibration with the needle and the coil machines. So when I developed that, it was a way for me to, you know, go disposable, but, but keep that old school kind of feel with it, you know. And I like that too with the, with the products that I've invented. I feel like they've gone on to whether or not people have ripped my products off, it contributes to tattooing because when I'm gone and in the ground or whatever, my my work will resonate. You know, that's the way I, that, and that makes me happy every day. So. I also saw one project of yours where you teach how to sit on this, on the, yes. on the chair. Yes. Because I have a lot of friends that they cannot tattoo for months yeah. because of the back. Yeah. Tattoo, like, it's not really injuries, it's just, you know, like acquired, yeah, like, acquired um, physical problems from tattooing. And that's something that I actually, you know, occurred in my body as well. And that scared me. When you don't, when you think that like, oh, my body's gonna break down my back, you know? So my experience is I have thoracic herniations and bulging discs in my spine from tattooing. I have neuralgia parasthetica from my belt pushing into my femoral nerve. Things that I wasn't really aware of tattooing, you know, cause as a tattooer, we focus on everything but ourselves. Typically, we tat we want to keep our client comfortable and make sure they're doing good and get the tattoo done. So we'll go straight 10 hours without even taking care of ourselves. Sometimes not even eating food, you know? Yeah, many people do. So, so back then, when I started to develop the problems, I was kind of like, uh-oh. But I felt too like I need to tell and teach other artists kind of what's going on with me as well as looking at other like carpal tunnel, true grips, help the carpal tunnel vibrations and things like that too. So, so some of my inventions are actually for the longevity of the artist. Um, I went on to teach the seminars too as a kind of high demand seminar called Longevity of the Artist, where I teach about physical problems that you normally won't think about when you're tattooing, you know, until something goes wrong. So I've traveled the world teaching my seminars at so many conventions. I've talked to thousands of artists. Uh, my seminar is now online. I put it online for free now. Where? On, what's that? Where, where it's on uh, my Dirt Morrison YouTube page. Okay. Yeah, so you can go there, and the whole seminar is on there now. So if you want to learn different aspects, I mean, it goes through the diet of the artist, the back, the eyes. It, it goes through the emotional part, you know, like the stress that artists go through sometimes too. So I felt like it was my chance being a veteran tattooer to like, all right, kids, listen up, you know, and they're like, so they could start their career and not run into those issues that us back in the day, we were just tattooing nonstop, you know, twisting, dipping for ink and not thinking about it, you know? So that's another way for me to give back to the artists and kind of 
help that next generation not run into a lot of the physical problems so they can continue to tattoo and have long, long tattoo careers. Yeah, I think that this point is one of the most important for the new generation. Because maybe the new generation think, okay, I need to be famous, I need to do, I need to work. And they maybe work all day, every day, more than the old generation. Yeah. But they forget themselves. You just said it. So that's a great point because back in the day, you know, like tattoos were a lot smaller. They were done a little bit more simplistic, more traditional, you know. So the average tattoo session wasn't 12 hours a day on the art, you know, 10, 12 hours a day. Nowadays, artists are creating masterpieces and full sleeves and back pieces, and they are in a higher demand because people are trying to knock things out in two, three days. You know, and that's like 30 hours, you know, 10 hours a day over three days, and then you're just like, Ooh. and you seriously can get like physical problems. So today's tattoo artist totally is under the demand for longer tattoo sessions in general. So that's where I think it's very important that artists are, are aware of their body, taking breaks, stretching, strengthening their core as well. That's another thing I teach about is like strengthening, you know, instead of yeah. uh, bringing your ink palette up to you so that when you're working on somebody, you're dipping here and working here. You're not doing this over and over to dip for ink, you know? So yeah, today's, today's artists are definitely under a lot more uh, demand for larger tattoos and, and it puts more of a stress on their body, definitely. But do you, um, do you have a request about this kind of uh, argument from artists from USA or still is something that artists don't care? It's becoming more, I think people are becoming more aware of it. I get a lot of emails from people too that are like, hey man, I'm having this pain. You know, it's almost like Dr. Derb nowadays, <laughs> you know? And I like that because if, if I can help an artist, you know, some people don't realize they're dipping the wrong way or they're crossing over and they get sciatic nerves or simply like take your wallet out of your, your pants when you're working, you know, to, to print sciatica and things like that. So um, yeah, I'm seeing a lot more uh, curiosity as far as like what people can do to to uh, better their bodies and not you know not be in pain while they're tattooing and one question completely separate from sure. this argument uh, do you think that the tattoo culture changed a lot of, during these 40 years of tattooing? yes yeah definitely in a good way okay. because it's more accepted now we're seeing a lot of uh, artists come out of art school and things like that so with the generation change, is definitely a culture change with tattooing and a, a perception. We're seeing tattoos doing being done now that my generation, you know, when I was tattooing as a kid, was laughed at or not seen as a viable form of tattooing, like stippling. We're seeing a lot of that now. It looks beautiful and it works. But way back in the late 80s, it was still traditional tattooing and it had to have these these strict rules to, to, to be a tattoo. But this generation and the culture now has kind of broken those rules and, and really opened up the art form, you know? So we're seeing a lot of styles develop now that are just, they're phenomenal and they look great. They're gonna last just as long as, you know, traditional tattoos and stuff. So, no, I like that the, the culture has opened up and, and been experiment, more experimental with the styles of tattooing. So it's, it's just making tattooing even more exciting. And uh, now we are in Italy, okay? Did you see something different between USA from the tattoo? Yes, definitely. I noticed like in Europe, especially in Italy, a lot more black and gray, a lot more um, classic style, a lot of fluent, you know, like styles and things like that. Um, so I, I say the dominance of black and gray over, especially in Italy, I've noticed in a lot, like just from the collectors walking around and it's mind blowing. Like it makes me go, I wish I was a black and gray tattooer because it looks so, you know, it's phenomenal. So yeah, I definitely see um, as I travel the world, you know, the different styles of tattooing and, and stuff like that. So I'd say in here in Italy, I've noticed a lot more black and gray work, you know, and it's so smooth and big body suits and things like that. So I'm impressed, you know, big time. And for your body, how you, you feel the tattoo? Because maybe you are already all done Almost. I'm okay. getting there. Yeah, I got a couple spots. I'm trying to keep my old man abs. <laughs> you know, I got like my one foot left and a little bit on my leg, a little bit on my armpits, but I'm almost, yeah, ah, gnarly. <laughs>
but yeah, so me personally, like I wear a lot of like full color, you know, tattoos. I do have some black and gray and stuff too. Uh, but I'm seeing over the, the years, I'm like, I'm gonna get recolored, you know, where I think black and gray literally will like last a little longer and just kind of smooths out as it ages. Me being tattooed, like I, I got started getting tattooed. I was tattooed in high school, man. I was in like 10th, 11th grade with tattoos on my forearms when nobody was like, none of the kids were tattooed. And I was like in school with forearm <laughs> tattoos, just this punk rock kid, you know, rebellious. And to me, it was a statement. It was an art form that I had found that wasn't big, you know, and it, it kind of pissed people off. But I loved it, <laughs> you know? So for me being a tattoo, that's all I associate with. I think if I woke up tomorrow and I wasn't tattooed, I'd be right back in the chair because I love being a tattoo. It expresses who I am. And one thing I've said, it's like a armor against ignorance, meaning if you, if you are a heavily tattooed person and, and you can see how people interact with you, so it'll show you if somebody's like nice or, or not or judgmental. And I typically, I use that as like a, an armor, you know, against uh, society a little bit as far as like, do you accept people for being different? Do you accept people for being tattooed, you know, in, in different colors and things like that, you know? So I've used tattoos in, in a lot of many ways in my own personal life, you know, and I, and I love it. I think that it's something that, uh, um chat with people like you that has more than 30 years of experience in the tattoo world yeah. traveling around the world can help the new generation to understand the importance to know what was before yeah and that's important like you said it like because uh, you know some of the younger generation may not know the roots of tattooing or kind of like what came before them i think it's a vital thing i think i always say a part of an apprenticeship should have a history side to it too you should know why why this style came about or what came before it or like who the forefather of like let's say tribal would be leo zulueta you know he went to the islands and tattooed and brought that back to america so in america leo zulueta is like the forefather of like tribal tattooing uh guy Eacheson and aaron kane you have the, the next from yeah guy this is uh, nick baxter uh guy Eacheson did like my, my okay. ribs and okay. my leg and stuff like that but these pioneers of tattooing that develop these styles that you know, the younger generation might not know where the roots are. And I think that's a very important. Another thing with like apprenticeships or what we talked about just a second ago was like a health aspect. So I think that the longevity of the artist seminar, like I'm telling people like you should show that to your apprentices before they get even a few years into tattooing and be like, oh, my back. Like teach the history, teach the roots, teach the health, you know, the health side for your body. And I think I wish I would have had that, you know, back when I was starting to tattoo, but it's very important, definitely very important. Uh, not a lot of people in the tattoo world think like this, you know, yeah. because most of the people are focused on the artistic part, on the technique, but never on the health part of the body, health part of the mind. Yeah. Because maybe you start and you want to learn tattooing, and then you start earning money, 10 times more than your friends and your mind is changing. Yeah, you can't let it get to you. You're talking about that part of it? Yeah, that. I mean, that's one of the things when you become a tattooer, like when I was younger, everybody was kind of viewing tattooing as a, like a degenerate type of, you know, punk kind of stigmatic art form. But once I was able to turn it to a career, like the first day I tattooed the shop, I made $600. I had never made money like that, you know? But what I did is I invested it back into my tattooing. I didn't I didn't use it as a false kind of perception. I was like, all right, this is gonna be good. Don't don't mess it up, you know, and, and manage your budget yourself. So you can't lose yourself in it. You can't think you're better than you you were because you have more money, you know, things like that. So that's a false perception right there. I think as a tattoo artist, it's important to stay humble, stay progressive, stay hungry, you know, and to help others along the way. Because if you get up here and you don't want to teach anybody or help people out and keep your little secrets, you're not doing, you're doing no good for tattooing, you know, at that point. So, yeah, I think, you know, handing things down and, and, and helping tattooing is very important. Um, I, I, I'm following you since maybe 10 years. Nice. And Thank you. I saw also that you uh, study uh, martial art. Yes. Uh, and I think that love it. helps you to 
avoid many, many of it these It does. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, um, I got into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu when I was 41, actually, and I just got my brown belt, so I'm like one belt away from the black belt. I've had multiple surgeries from it. But at the same time, it, it's helped my body, like with my back issues and things like that. As, as much as I get beat up, and it kind of like can hurt your body if you don't know, it's also helped my body. It keeps me flexible. As I'm aging, it's helped with keeping me in shape, like cardio wise. You're seeing a lot of tattooers nowadays, like get into like jujitsu and things like that. I think it's important. It's part of that whole longevity thing. You have to have uh, an activity or some way to break the work mode before you go home, a way to disconnect, a way to have something else. You know, if you're just tattooing, throw food in your face, going and drawing at home, going to sleep, waking up tattooing, you're doing good for tattooing, but you're not doing good for your physical self, you know, or your mental self too, because exercise is very important. So that's part of me like teaching all that too. So once I got into jujitsu, I realized how many tattooers were doing it. And it's kind of like, I, I say I have my, my tattoo family, I also have my fight family, you know? So to me, that's very important. So it's breaking the mold from work to uh, doing something recreational to like not forget yourself, you know? So I, I love it, man. As much as it's injuring and it's the hardest thing I've done next to tattooing, I love it. Uh, I think that you are an inspiration for many artists uh, during the, the, the past years. But what do you think about people not tattoo artists in the tattoo world. There is space for them, like manager, you know, people with idea that they want to, to help. That aren't necessarily artists. Yeah, because the tattoo world, the tattoo artists are on the top. Yeah. The rest, no one knows. You know. True. Yeah. As far as like shop managers, I think it's important to tell you the truth. Like, you should treat anybody that's there to help you. You know, whether it's your your buddy that's going out and flyering the streets for you or your managers that book your appointments. There's no way, like, it's a team thing, when you, especially when you're trying to tattoo a lot. A manager is vital. You, you have to have a manager, you know, to help you and to deal with all the people. Maybe it's just keeping up with your emails and things like that. So people within studios that aren't tattooing, to me, are an essential part. You know, a shop doesn't run with just the artist sitting on his butt. It takes the person being like, hey, how you doing? Answering the phones or taking care of the artist too because it could be, tattooing could be a very stressful thing as well. Like I said, you're focusing on your client more than yourself. So when you're constantly working and getting up, making your own stencils and things like that, it can be very stressful. So if you have people that can help you out, you know, uh, in your studio, that'll save you time. It'll actually help you make more money because it'll, you know, time efficiency and stuff like that. So. And it goes, I mean, sometimes your buddies just stop in to hang out, you know, and, and good company and things like that are, 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 are vital as well. Thank you so much for your time. Definitely. I don't want to bother you more. Brother. It was a pleasure. Thank you. I hope to come in, uh, in Hell City. Yes. Day. Yeah, come over and see us, seriously. Hell City, we do Hell City in Columbus, Ohio. It's, it's uh, at the Hyatt Regency downtown. There's two levels, three ballrooms. So there's different ballrooms, you know. Uh, we have the wet paint project, so we have about 30 people painting live, and you go in there. The Phoenix, Arizona edition uh, is kind of more of a tattoo vacation. It's busy, but you have like the pool and the slides. So it's like all the tattooers aren't really, like the Ohio one, they all go to the bar, hang out, and hang out in the rooms. At the Phoenix show, it's like a swim party. So you get to like act like little kids with your friends and swim and stuff like that. So it's a lot of fun. You should definitely come over. We will plan it. <laughs> Heck yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it, man.